All right, so so we're back here, um, yeah, finishing off this example. But I, I just want you to notice that that you, we didn't have to calculate these these equations technically. We didn't have to do this to finish this out. You know, we had, you know, essentially we had this member one that we knew the internal loading on end i here, and we could, you know, we we have three equilibrium equations to solve the internal loading, if you will, at n j. But we could have gone through this shear, the the axial and shear and moment diagram. And concluded the same numbers without having ha ever having done these equilibrium equations. Okay, so that's hopefully that 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 makes sense to everyone that's watching this. The um, the next thing we want to do is go to member two and and look at member i and j. And, and essentially, what we're doing here is cutting right before, right here, like this. Okay, we're cutting right here at right before the joints at for this member to isolate this member. So here, let's look now at member two. And let's do member two right over here. So here, actually, let's just go down. Let's go here. Uh, member two. Member two right here. And if you, if I look at member two, which we'll draw right here like this. Here's member two. And I have, again, this cut here. Right here. And what I find on this cut is that, you know, based on the reactions that we have at D, at D. So here, let me let me blow this up for here. This is maybe a little bit more detail than needed. Here is joint D. Okay. Here is this reaction at D. Here is this cut. And at D, I have I have dx and dy, which were which we found to be uh, dy was what did we say? Uh, Six point eight kilonewtons, and dx was negative twenty. So that meant that we had twenty kilonewtons this way and 6.8 kilonewtons this way okay if if i look at the member right here and just on the inside of that member i would have to have a shear here going this way of 6.8 kilonewtons and a uh, normal force of 20 kilonewtons this way for this joint to be in equilibrium and the moment here because i'm at a point this moment has to be zero okay so this is a, a blow up and what happens is Here's that. Here's this cut. Here's the right side of the cut. On the left side of the cut, I have equal and opposite. So I'm going to end up with 6.8 going this way and 20 going this way, like that. Okay. And 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 then I have the intermediate loading on this beam right here, member two, right here, like this. Oh. So hopefully this looks okay. And this was what was this loading? This was eight or four kilonewtons per meter. So four kilonewtons per meter. Okay. Now I could try to draw this diagram. I, I have called this end I, end J, and according to what I've done, this is you know plus X goes this way like that, and plus local plus Y, the local coordinate plus Y goes upwards right here. I could try to draw this going right to left. If you're comfortable with it, like I, I would, I would be comfortable, with, like me myself, because I, I feel comfortable with my shear relationship equations. I would go right to left, okay. But for those of you who aren't comfortable yet, you know what you have here is you're gonna have you want to calculate here the the reactions at the face of this cut. There's gonna be a a normal uh, of two at end i, a shear. That goes, uh, um, let's see, on the right side of the cut. So up, positive would be up. So we'll call this member two and I, and then a moment, moment of two at end I. And so we're going to use equilibrium equations to solve for this, okay, right here. And so I would have here, so I would, I could just do some of the forces in the horizontal equals zero, and that tells me that. Um, n2 minus n2i uh, minus 20 equals zero so n2i equals 20 kilonewtons okay and uh, um and then we'll come and let me just calculate the reactions real fast and then i'll just show them up here but you can you could get kind of guess where we're going all right so i've calculated i, I kind of took a break and calculated the reactions here or if, not the reactions, but the internal loading at end I for member two here. And all I did was take some of the forces in the horizontal, some of the forces in the vertical to calculate the shear. And I took some of the moments about this point right here at end I 
right there. And I got these moments. And you, these, these values should look really similar, okay? And, I, and I'll explain what they mean in, in, at the end of the video, why they're similar. Or at least it, it'll be obvious. Um, but here, at, so here now I want to redraw my, my member right here. I want to redraw my member and the loading. And in fact, I don't even, I don't want these squigglies anymore, okay? I don't want the squigglies here. I have here, I have at this end I, I have a shear of 9.2 kilonewtons. I got positive, so that's 9.2. 9.2. Uh, I have a normal force of 20 kilonewtons in, oh, that should have been a negative number. My bad. That should have been negative. So this should be causing compression here of 20 kilonewtons. And then I have a moment here that's positive, which means that I should have, wait, should that be positive? This is, oh, it should be negative. Dang, all kinds of mistakes. Dang, that's, so if you mess that up, you're going to mess up the whole thing. So that's negative. That means this moment should go this way, a 4.8 uh, kilonewton meter, kilonewtons. So you'll notice that wherever there were negatives over here, I have, the, if you compare this drawing to this one over here, you'll see that the directions are opposite here. And then here I would have the 6.8 and the 20 going like this. 6.8 kilonewtons, 20. And then I also don't want to forget my distributed load. Now it's just a matter of drawing the shear and moment diagrams. So this is, you know, this is just all review going left to right. Uh, again, just to tell you this is my plus little x or my local x. And here's my plus local y and and because this is end i and here's end j you know i can use my my normal sign convention or happy face or compression at the top for positive bending and so here this is hopefully pretty straightforward and you are kind of racing me maybe on your own paper competing against me and drawing the diagram fastest or first who knows right however you like to study and prepare but this would be the, bam, kilonewtons right here. And I know that if I take a, a cut somewhere right here, I'm going to have a compression going across. So I have here, all the way across, I will use the color blue, is just minus 20, minus 20. So this is my axial force diagram in this case for this member. Then I have a shear diagram. And my shear diagram, I'm going to go over here. Bam, like this. I start at, um, oh, let me label that correctly in kilonewtons right here. Uh, I have, I, I start, I go up 9.2. Bam, 9.2. And then I'm decreasing linearly. This area is uh, 16, 16 kilonewtons. And so if I go, I have to change 16 kilonewtons, and that should take me down to 6 point, negative 6.8. Okay, right here, minus 6.8. And it should, that value should match my reaction. And then that gives me, if you will, back to zero or something. Some people like to do that, but it doesn't matter. Right here, bam, like this. And then my moment diagram is, I can, based on my, on my, um, on my, on what I have here, my moment diagram. So I have a moment right here in kilonewton meters. And, and here's the thing, I, this moment is pointing down, right? And so one of the things I like to do, if I'm going left to right and I draw it on the left side of my joint and the arrow points down, that means I have to start from the bottom. But this is the negative moment. That means at the end I have a negative moment, if you will, or causing compression at the bottom, which is considered negative in our case. So this would be right here, this value. Let me give myself a little bit more. Bam. And bam, right here. This right here would be my minus 4.8 kilonewton meters. Then I'm increasing. I'm increasing here with a positive shear value. So I'm going to increase this area right here. And this area, oh shoot, I got to figure out what this zero is right here. What is this distance right here? Where am I zero? So that's, I start at 9.2. And I decrease at a rate of 4 kilonewtons per meter. So this is 4 kilonewtons per meter decreasing slope. So really this distance is just 9.2 kilonewtons divided by 4.2 kilonewtons per meter, which is um, 
2.3 meters. So that distance, that location right here. So I'm going to have a max moment right there at 2.3 meters. And then this area right here, this area is 1 half 9.2 times 2.3. And that would be 10.5 kilonewton meters. And so that means I'm going to change from negative 4.8, 10.5 kilonewton meters. So that would be this change here. So 10.5 minus 4.8 is, oh, help me, uh, 5 point, oh, 10.5. So I, this, this change, sorry, is going to be 10.5. This value will be 5.7 positive. So that's right about here where there's zero right there. And I'm going to be, I have a slope here of 9.2. And then here, my value of the shear is zero, so I know I'm like this, this horizontal. And so my parabola looks like this right here. And then right here, here's that was 5.7. Then I have to calculate this area over here, which I'll call this. I'll put this in orange right here. That area, this area is 1 half 6.8 times... Um, What's, what was it, four, six meters or four meters? Four minus 2.3, which is a 1.7. So it was four meters. So that should be, this distance right here is 1.7. And so that times 1.7 is 5.7.8-ish. Ah, so I have some significant figure issues, but, but that essentially says that I have to change from here to here and I go back down to zero. So this should be 5.7 approximately 5.7 kilonewton meters that I need to change here. And that means the rest of my curve starts from a slope of zero to a negative 6.8 here. And so my curve looks like that. And this is my moment diagram for member two of my frame. Okay. And so hopefully that, that was helpful to you. I know this is a long two-part video, but frames and with angled members has never been easy. And it takes lots of practice. Uh, the one thing that, that you I wanted to mention here is if you look right here at member at this joint C right here. So if I if I were to blow this structure up, so I want to make a small point here. If I if I were to blow the structure up, I have here this, and I'm blowing it up. Okay, so I have this right here, and I draw the joints separately, like this, and here like that. Uh, I had at this reaction right here, I had 9.2 kilonewtons. I also had something doing horizontal right here of 20, 20 kilonewtons. Okay, and, and one way I could look at this is is I know that I had decomposed this into you know this component and and this you know normal and parallel to the cut essentially, right? But I didn't have to. I could have just kept this you know, 9.2 kilonewtons like this. And then that means that I would have been 9.2 kilonewtons like this. And I would have had, here, I would have had to have 20 kilonewtons to make sure this member was in equilibrium. And I would have had to have a moment here. That moment would have been the same, obviously, because moments are not influenced by this angle. So I would have had, for member one, this 4.84, this negative 4.84. So I would have had this moment right here, 4.84 kilonewton meters. Then when I go to joint C here, which has this, you know, cut, if you will, no loading on the joint. Oh, sorry, I got to be more precise here. It has a slight angle, if you will, like this. Each of these is equal and opposite at this face. So I would have uh, 9.2 going that way. I would have a 20 going this way. And I would have the moment 4.84 going that way. This joint must stay in equilibrium. Okay, because my whole structure is in equilibrium. So that means I have equal and opposite on this side. I have 9.2. I have um, 4.84 kilonewton meters. And I have 20 kilonewtons doing that. So these are all just to make sure kilonewton meters, kilonewtons, kilonewtons, kilonewtons like this. Then on this face here, look at I, I've walked through without doing any sort of equilibrium equations. I've walked through and I have here, bam. 20 kilonewtons, this would have been 9.2, 20, 
and then equal and again equal and opposite from the space right here this would have been uh, 4.84 kilonewton meters 20 kilonewtons 9.2 kilonewtons and then I have and then I have this loading that's going on here in this member right here and what you'll notice as you can imagine is that these numbers right here match these right here okay it, it, we we made these cuts and did equilibrium but they those i walked it through if you will so that's another way to keep determine the member end loading if you will the internal loading at member ends okay and then right here just as i, I told you before there was a a 20 kilonewton this way and uh, um i forgot what that number was what the hell was that number that was a 6.8 6.8 kilonewtons this way and you know I, I walked you through that one already so that here I end up with 6.8 this way and 20 kilonewtons this way and you know this works because every member is going to be in equilibrium right and the whole structure is in equilibrium so this would have been this and this like that all right so hopefully that had some explanation that was useful to you if you have all this information essentially you have all this information if you have these member end loadings if you will it doesn't matter if it's statically determinate or indeterminate you can draw the shear moment diagrams okay all right so that's once you know the end loadings and and the, inter and the external loadings uh you're good to go all right so hopefully that was insightful and useful and uh see you next time